Okay, everyone can see my screen correctly. Okay, so yes. um, thank you. So um, please uh, feel free to interrupt or uh, have questions at the end. Either way is fine with me. So it is my great pleasure to share with you um, our recent uh, vision for soft, robot, uh, soft electronics for human-centered robots. Um, as we all know, our uh, human civilization has already gone through uh, three industrial revolutions. And right now we are going through the fourth one, which is also called Industry 4.0. It includes, uh, it is called cyber physical systems. Mm -hmm. uh, and it includes things like uh, Internet of Things, um, 5G, robotics, um, uh, big data, and uh, um, Internet of uh, Health, and so on. So uh, the key idea is to connect the cyber and the physical world. Um, for me, I would also like to add bio into this picture and call it a cyber physical bio systems, which means we also have to uh, digitize uh, the bio systems like human beings and then connect the digitized human beings into the internet. Indeed, uh, Elon Musk uh, had this concern that if humans cannot merge with machines or electronics, they will become irrelevant in the AI age. But if we look at the previous vision of um, human-machine merging, we can clearly see the mismatch between uh, rigid, bulky, and digital machines versus uh, soft, deformable and um, analog human body. So uh, there is a big a gap in between and um, soft electronics is the technology that can bridge this gap. If uh, that picture is too uh, forward looking, um, you may appreciate those already available um, interactions uh, with human and uh, robots. For example, uh, prosthesis, augmented human capability, a robo doctor who can perform um, remote surgery uh, using uh, robotic uh, surgery machines. And um, specifically for human, uh, we also need those um, soft robots for uh, social interaction and uh, medical or nursing cares. So in all of those uh, applications, uh, it involves the human-robot interaction and communication, uh, which requires digitizing the human body. But if we compare a human body, which is a soft machine with a conventional machine like a car, we can see the drastic uh, contrast that there are thousands of sensors in a car, but uh, there are rarely, uh, rarely any sensors on human body. But uh, both uh, machines are radiating highly personal, continuous, distributed, and multimodal data about the health, the readiness, and specifically for human, the emotion and the intention. Currently, we are still missing um, high performance sensors that are wearable, long term, and uh, robust for ambulatory sensing. Uh, we have a lot of available wearable electronics nowadays, but as you could um, easily see, they are intrinsically bulk, uh, rigid, bulky, um, single functional and short term. Um, our goal is to uh, build a skin soft, hair thin, a multimodal and long-term wearable electronic tattoo stickers that can be patched on any part of our skin uh, for multimodal uh, sensing and wireless communication. Just to uh, give you a few quick examples, um, here we use the graphene electronic tattoo, which we call GETS, um, to measure the uh, electro-oculogram induced by our eyeball rotation because our eyeballs are dipoles. And uh, when we look up, down, left, right, we can um, send the EOG data wirelessly to a laptop here. And the laptop will convert our EOG signal 
to commands that can wirelessly control the drone. Because of the transparent and uh, imperceptible graphene ETA2, you cannot really see them. Barely you can see them through some reflection, um, but uh, we are able to control a drone um, by just uh, um, rot rotating our eyeballs. And um, there's no camera on the drone and there's no way you can tell how we're controlling the drone because all of our graphene eta twos are invisible. And we call this imperceptible human robot interface. The eta 2 is imperceptible in terms of both uh, mechanical properties as well as optical properties. In the second example, uh, we have engineered very large area eta 2 that can cover uh, very large surface of our skin, even if it's highly curvilinear. And here we are, have a 16 channel ARM EMG ETA2 using uh, completely dry uh, gold based electrodes. And we can sense uh, many different muscle groups on our forearm that controls the motion of uh, five of our fingers. And through that, uh, we could and develop a machine learning algorithm to recognize the American Sign Language of the 26 alphabets. And we can use our hand to speak uh, hello, goodbye, those kind of sign language. Of course, uh, because of this accurate sensing of all the individual fingers, uh, we can also um, do processes control of individual fingers, even for um, left hand amputees. So this is another uh, human-machine interaction example. But in addition to electronic tattoos, there is another big field called uh, electronic skins. Because in the future, uh, if uh, um, we want to interact with the robot, we want to make sure the robots also have um, human sensing capabilities, which need to use electronic skins to sense uh, temperature, uh, uh, pressure, moisture, texture, and so on. So this is uh, an art created uh, by uh, Dr. Park. So uh, there are many leaders in this field, uh, including uh, Professor Janan Bao, uh, Takao Somaya, um, Daehyung Kim, and many others. And each skin has gone through a uh, 40 years of uh, development already. So um, if we take a look at uh, pressure sensing mechanisms that are popular out there. Uh, we have piezo resistive uh, pressure sensors, which are easy to fabricate and have simple structure, but they uh, consume power and um, they are sensitive to temperature and other um, hysteresis effects. Um, there are also piezo capacitive pressure sensors uh, they are very popular because of their high sensitivity and uh, temperature independence and uh, low power consumption. Um, there are also piezoelectric and triboelectric pressure sensors. Uh, they're also very popular. Uh, they can be self-powered, but they are not suitable for static pressure sensing. Um, there are also optical pressure sensors, um, but they have uh, a lot of complication in terms of the setup and power consumption. So, because of this comparison, um, our group focused on um, piezo capacitive pressure sensors. Um, just uh, before we talk about that, uh, I want to give you one example where we actually used the piezo resistive pressure sensor because of their simple imp uh, implementation. And uh, uh, in collaboration with Professor uh, Chi Huan Li at Purdue Uni University, we engineered this uh, multifunctional uh, robot a glove where we could have a um, moisture sensor, temperature sensor, and pressure sensor all over distributed on this glove. And here, uh, the glove is able to sense um, a shaking hand with human and also uh, sense the moisture of a diaper through the moisture sensor, for example. And we can also check uh, human temperature and so on. So this is one example using piezo resistive pressure sensor. However, our focus today is the capacitive pressure sensor. As we all know, um, between a parallel 
uh, between two parallel plates, uh, if we have a dielectric material, uh, it can change capacitance when we apply pressure and uh, deform the dielectric material. And this is the capacitance equation, which is proportional to the dielectric constant, the permittivity of air, and uh, the area of electrode divided by the distance between two electrodes. So if we plot the uh, relative capacitance change versus applied pressure, we normally see this kind of uh, nonlinear curve and the sensitivity uh, is uh, decaying as the temperature increase. Uh, this is because uh, when we um, write out the sensitivity equation, uh, which is uh, the derivative of this uh, black curve, uh, we can see that it is proportional to one over the Young's modulus of the uh, deformable dielectric and also uh, the decay dp um, relation. And um, from this equation, we can find the two ways to enhance the sensitivity of a capacitive pressure sensor, uh, which is reducing the modulus, making softer dielectric material, and also um, more advanced is to make the dielectric constant vary or increase with the applied pressure. So basically changing this term. And uh, indeed, uh, there has been a lot of efforts in both directions. Uh, first is uh, to engineer the dielectric material to have, for example, uh, surface patterns like pyramids or using a foam material or a porous network um, to reduce the effective compressive modulus. And also because uh, the air gap is uh, gradually replaced by the um, polymer matrix or the uh, nanowire matrix, there could be an enhancement of dielectric constant with pressure as we compress, the air is squeezed and the uh, um, solid takes over. So uh, following this uh, idea, um, there are also a lot of work uh, trying to build even higher K dielectric material so that we can have more effective decay DP enhancement. So uh, by that, people can dope polymer with uh, um, conductive fillers and they can increase the dielectric constant from three uh, up to 10, 20, and so on. So uh, however, after um, many years of uh, development, uh, both ideas have been already extensively explored. Even so, um, if we plot the sensitivity versus pressure, the um, tangential sensitivity, local sensitivity, we still see a significant decay of the sensitivity uh, as we uh, enter large pressure range. And uh, indeed, uh, this still remains to be a challenging area. So um, this is because of the um, limited enhancement of the uh, um, sensitive, uh, of the um, compliance as well as the uh, um, dielectric constant. So both methods kind of reached their upper limit already. So um, if uh, we want to further improve the sensitivity and occupy this challenging area, we have to take a fundamental look at this sensing mechanism, which is piezo capacitive sensor. So in this uh, mechanism, only capacitance is changing due to pressure. However, if we can engineer a capacitive pressure sensor with porous nanocomposite, which is electrically conductive, we have this kind of structure. We have both piezo-resistive contribution and piezo-capacitive contribution. Of course, to make the overall pressure sensor still capacitive, we have to add a, an ultra thin insulating layer, for example, 500 nanometer thick PMMA, but we will be able to benefit from the hybrid response of an electrically conductive porous nanocomposite. And we call this kind of um, new capacitive pressure sensor hybrid response pressure sensor, HERPS. 
because of this uh, uh, hybrid effect. So our hypothesis is that we could further enhance the capacitive pressure sensor sensitivity over large pressure range through this herps mechanism. So to manufacture this herps, uh, we have to dope uh, functionalized CNT uh, with uh, Ecoflex. And then we uh, dip coat a commercially available nickel foam into this uh, um, mixture. And then um, by etching away the nickel foam, we can end up with just the uh, conductive polymer. So uh, we want to emphasize the effect of sonication to ensure a very uniform distribution of the functionalized CNT. So this was uh, the nickel foam. And after etching away the nickel foam, we end up with the CNT doped porous nanocomposite. Um, it has very large pores. Therefore, the composite is squeezed into very thin and hollow uh, ligaments. And because of that, we need a relatively low doping concentration, like only 0.25% CNT would make it electrically conductive. The porosity is very high, 86%. Therefore, this uh, uh, CNT Ecoflex uh, foam is uh, very, very soft. And uh, we compared the uh, um, capacitance uh, response of our herps with a conventional um, capacitive pressure sensors like a solid one or foam one or even uh, um, a CNT doped one, but electrically non-conductive. And we compared all of them together. What we found is this. This is a plot of the relative capacitance change versus pressure. The red ones uh, represent the solid ones. So the Ecoflex is pink, the um, solid but uh, 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 CNT doped one is, uh, black, uh, is uh, red. So both of the solid ones are not very sensitive as we could appreciate. The green ones are the porous ones, which are not conductive. You can see compared with solid ones, the porous ones are more sensitive. And the blue one is the uh, electrically conductive, but with an insulating layer. So those two are non-conductive ones. This is conductive one with insulating layer, most conductive even at large pressure, still very high sensitivity. If we uh, plot uh, our herps response in this uh, um, sensitivity pressure chart, we could reach a very significant enhancement as you could see, and push the envelope further into this upper right region. And um, the sensitivity as a function of pressure uh, could benefit from two uh, stages of enhancement. As we already mentioned, the first uh, enhancement comes from the porosity. The second enhancement comes from the electrical conductivity because at a small pressure, it is uh, indeed very piezo capacitive, capacitive, but at high pressure, uh, piezo resistivity also kicks in and that gives us the second stage of enhancement. It also, uh, the sensitivity also depends on the um, uh, carbon nanotube doping. Um, depending on the doping, uh, there could be an optimum uh, performance. So to understand this herbs uh, performance, we have uh, built a very simple but very effective um, circuit model to uh, model the effect of both um, uh, 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 dielectric constant enhancement as well as the uh, um, uh, electrical resistance enhancement. And as we could see, um, when we have a relatively low doping concentration, uh, where our circuit model can fully capture the experimental result, which is the dashed line. Um, when we have relatively large uh, CNT concentration and it becomes very conductive, our model no longer works very well. You can see a big gap. This is because when uh, the composite is not very conductive, the electrical field is still between the two parallel electrodes. But when the composite becomes very conductive, 
the electrical field is significantly distorted. But our model was uh, built uh, based on this electrical field. So we can only explain uh, relatively uh, less conductive um, uh, PNC. So this kind of highly uh, sensitive PNC could be integrated on robotic finger. That's what we are still working on. But here we are demonstrating it's a high sensitivity to measure very subtle uh, physiological signals like uh, pulse waves. We all know that uh, measuring uh, pulse waves is highly challenging because of the uh, very small um, pressure, like uh, uh, sometimes could be less than uh, one kilopascal. But using our herps, we could uh, easily see this uh, um, PTD characteristic wave uh, forms according to the invasive uh, gold standard measurement of the uh, carotid artery pulse. And on the wrist, over the radial artery, we can still measure the radial artery pulse. And uh, the most subtle pulse is actually the temporal artery pulse on our uh, head. Uh, in this case, uh, it's a very small pressure, but even under a very large preload, for example, when we wear a headset, um, this preload could be 10 uh, kilopascal. We are still able to measure the temporal artery pulse without any problem. So this indicates the benefit of high sensitivity at large pressure so that we can still measure this very subtle pulse. So in summary, um, I have uh, mentioned uh, both e-tattoos and e-skins. E-tattoos are for human wear, whereas e-skins are for robot wear. And we still need to further uh, develop an e-skin based on our herbs for uh, smart, intelligent robots. Uh, many software materials and sensors can find applications in both fields. For example, our herbs could be uh, applied on e tattoo to measure human physiology, but it could also be applied on e skin for, uh, to enable robotic sensing. Um, bioelectronics interface dictates the e tattoo performance. Um, the e skin could benefit from a nature inspiration. Uh, there are many opportunities lie in mechanics. Materials, electronics, bioengineering, data science, and their convergence. And there are many challenges actually lying ourselves, our privacy, data security, user compliance, um, research ethics, and so on. And I am very happy to hear your thoughts and uh, collaborate with you. Uh, here are my senior collaborators without whom uh, the research would not be possible. I want to give them a big thanks. And ultimately, our funding agencies uh, from US NSF, NIH, our, my home school, um, and the uh, Office of Naval Research, Army Research Lab. And uh, as a conflict of interest disclaimer, uh, currently the uh, StretchMed Inc. at Austin is commercializing our uh, electronic tattoos. And uh, I want to give a special thanks to my interdisciplinary team at UT Austin. And with that, I want to thank everyone for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, it's very, very interesting concepts in this uh, uh, electronic skin and the e tattoos. So um, I, I would uh, I would jump in here to the to the to the chat. We had here one first uh, question. Um, on on the on the drone example, I think you addressed this in the presentation. But either way, how do you stream the EOG data from the graphene tattoo in the drone control example? Was it via wireless data streaming, right? Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So I'm I'm not sure if someone else has questions that they would like to make you can also raise your hand here in the in the zoom and i can uh, know it too yes uh here is the uh, drone example so uh in here the e tattoo is still uh wired to a data acquisition box on the back of the caller uh, which has data acquisition as well as uh, well, bluetooth communication and we send that to the um laptop over here 
and uh, the laptop is controlling the drone uh, through Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, which kind of uh, which kind of substrates are you using for this kind of uh, uh, you know very thin uh, patches that you use? Yes, so uh, this uh, graphene is a monolayer CVD graphene. That's why it's so transparent, but it's ultra thin, 0.34 nanometer. So it cannot be freestanding by itself. And what we used was uh, 500 nanometer PMMA because PMMA was used for the wet transfer of uh, CVD graphene anyway, but most people, uh, dissolve PMMA for uh, microelectronics. But in our case, we kept PMMA as the supporting substrate. And we use a um, water soluble um, uh, tattoo paper to fish the PMMA graphene bilayer from the liquid. And then we use a dry patterning, a subtractive uh, patterning uh, technology, which we call cut and paste to remove the extraneous part to arrive at this kind of serpentine uh, pattern for uh, softness and stretchability. And then the water soluble paper is very easy to transfer um, directly to human skin, just exactly like a temporary tattoo sticker. Okay, very clear, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we have here another, another question uh, about uh, uh, Pulse wave detection. If you have tested pulse wave detection sensors against uh, uh, gold standards, right? So um, currently, there uh, the gold standard is this uh, invasive measurement. So we have to insert a catheter into the artery, and the catheter has the pressure sensor that measures the actual uh, blood pressure inside the artery. Um, so uh, this is a, a qualitative um, picture to show the feature of such kind of uh, uh, arterial pressure wave. Um, we have not directly uh, done animal study to compare our um, pressure uh, with pulse wave sensor against uh, those catheter uh, measurements, but we know um, if we have this feature with the PTD uh, wave, we are measuring the arterial pulse. Okay. Okay, one last question here. Um, could you comment on the ambipolar electrical nature of graphene on its sensing application? Uh, the what nature, excuse me? Uh, the ambipolar electrical nature of graphene. Uh, so, so the M by graphene has this ambipolar, ambipolar uh, electrical nature, uh -huh. uh, and how this impacts the, the sensing application. Uh, I'm not familiar with the M bipolar uh, nature. Uh, what does it mean? So, and bipolar, uh, I mean, you can you can have uh, uh, conduction in, in, in both uh, 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 directions, essentially. So. Oh, connecting yeah. both A and P type, right. So uh, it is a semi-metal and um, it could be able to, uh, it could have a connection from both A and P type. And um, therefore there are, uh, uh, some uh, optical applications of graphene in biosensing that can leverage uh, this kind of uh, um, uh, behavior. Uh, I have not uh, looked into uh, those kind of uh, sensing capabilities myself, um, but uh, um, yes, graphene is uh, unique uh, from uh, other uh, connectors in this sense. Uh, that's a very good point. Okay. Thank you so much. I think we run out of time for questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Lu, for, for your presentation and the question and answers uh, session. Thanks, so everyone. we thank you. So we move.